In today's video, I got up nice and early to capture some dreamy, smooth seascapes. So I've come this morning to St. Monin's, about an hour and a half north of Edinburgh, and I've come to the pretty iconic zigzag um, sort of harbour wall breakwater thing that it's got. The reason I've come here this morning is because we've got this really gorgeous light. You can probably see the light coming in on my face. It's only about seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and so we've got this lovely side light coming in on the wall itself. That's great because it makes it really stand out from the water around it. We've got lovely orange lights coming in from this side. You can see it's lit up here, lovely shadow on this side. So we've got some really nice contrast. And I think that's going to help like the yellows and oranges of the wall itself really stand out from the blue of the water. So I've gone for a pretty classic view looking straight down this zigzag. Uh, I've got a 24 to 105 mil lens on. I am at the widest 24. Um, what I do like about the scene as well at the moment is because the tide is sort of, it's not quite high, it's a little bit in the middle. Um, we've got this nice exposed rock here. So in this composition, it's a little difficult to tell, but we have got that rock just appearing here. So it just feels nicely balanced overall. But what I do want is to get a really dreamy long exposure. I want this to be at least a minute long to turn all of that water into like a glassy smooth surface. So obviously in order to get that, I have got a 10 stop neutral density filter on the front of my camera, along with a circular polarizer as well. Now that's gonna let me get an exposure time of around one minute 20, but I might increase my aperture a little bit more in order to get a longer exposure. Now I've got my shot set up, it's fairly straightforward. I'm actually using the uh, live view screen for this because it allows me to use that as my bulb exposure. I can simply tap two second timer and then it starts to take the photo and I can literally just wait until it counts up to about a minute, a minute 15. I used to always use um, remote triggers for doing um, bulb exposure, but I actually just find tapping on the screen and watching the numbers go up to be just as easy. And while I'm waiting for it to take, I get to just stand and look at all of this. It's such a beautiful location. I love coming to St. Martins, or in fact, any of these small fishing villages um, up the east coast of Scotland. I mean, I'm sure the west coast has got great ones too, but I'm on the east coast. Okay, let's stop my exposure. And I think that's looking pretty nice. But as always, when you're doing shots like this, it is important to zoom in on your details. Oops. And just check that everything is nice and sharp. It looks great, actually. Some lovely sort of cloudy motion of the water around that rock. Yep, I think we've got something pretty nice here. So I'm going to take a few more, slightly change my angle, maybe tweak my settings a little bit, see what else we can get. Okay, I'm bringing in the big guns. I've taken out my 10 stop ND and I'm gonna put in my 15 stop super stopper. Now that is gonna let me get exposures of three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, even 10, 15, 20 if I wanted. But I'm gonna try and keep my aperture a little bit wider. I think I'm aiming for a 5.6 and using the calculator on my phone, I'm gonna get an exposure time of around three and a half minutes. It's about double what I got with just the 10 stop filter. So I think it's gonna get some really, really beautiful results. I'm looking forward to taking that shot now. 
The other thing I've done is raise the camera on the central column to maximize the height on this tripod. Um, normally that would give it a little bit more wobble, but there's so little wind right now that I'm not too worried. The reason I've done that is because I want to be looking down more on this harbor wall. Let's try and get my focus, there we go. You see, if we're at say a low angle down here, you can see that all these angles start to kind of converge. Whereas if you go higher, it all sort of separates out a little bit more and you can really emphasize all this kind of jagged nature. I mean, ideally, if I was shooting from up here, it would look even better. But my tripod doesn't go that high. That's about seven feet. Uh, unfortunately, this is my maximum height, but I think this still looks really, really nice. And actually, <laughs> now I'm shooting here, I prefer this composition about two feet to the right of where I am shooting. So once this shot's done, I'm gonna move it slightly over and get this one as well. And actually that's a good tip when you come into places like this, or in fact, whatever photo you're taking, is always think of how you can refine your composition. Don't just come somewhere, set your camera up, just take the one shot and then consider it done. Look at that shot, move around, take a few steps in different directions, maybe get lower, get higher up, just experiment and actually see what works best. If you just snap away without really thinking about it, you might be able to get like a decent shot, but there's probably a way that you can take that decent shot and make it absolutely amazing. I have got really nice light this morning. Arguably, it would have been an amazing sunset. Sunset? Sunrise. But sunrise is about half past five in the morning in sort of late spring, early summer around here. And um, given that it was an hour and a half drive from Edinburgh, I'd have been having to get up at a horrifically early time. And I couldn't be bothered. Just couldn't be bothered. This seemed early enough. I was up at five, on the road by six, and um, shooting here for about 7.15, 7.30ish, give or take. Three and a half minutes. Okay. So I have moved my tripod, was here, just a couple of feet, but I think it is gonna make all the difference. I think we're kind of looking straight down the middle of it, which I think is gonna look a little bit nicer. And I have popped in my 15 stop ND. And that is gonna give me an exposure time, I've just calculated, of about five and a half minutes. But the thing that I've got to keep in mind though, is that I may need to do it for a little bit less because the sun is rising pretty quickly. And even in the time since I took my last photo, it's got a little bit brighter. So every minute it's getting slightly brighter and therefore I won't need to expose it for quite as long. So I'm gonna try and aim for maybe four minutes, 40, something like that, and see how that looks. There's a little bit of a balancing act doing these kind of shots and it is sometimes a bit of trial and error, but I'm basically having the opposite problem that I will have when I shoot at sunset in that, hang on, if I get out of the sun a little bit, there we go. Um, in, that, in the sunset, the light is getting steadily darker. So what you've exposed for at say 8.45 is gonna be slightly different to what it's gonna need at 8.47. So usually in sunset, you will need to increase that exposure time to account for the fact that you're getting less and less light. Whereas this morning, obviously the sun's coming up, so there is more and more light. So I need to be slightly reducing that exposure time. I hope all this makes sense. I feel like I'm making what should be quite a straightforward concept, needlessly complicated, but there we go, that's what I do. So we're on three minutes 20. I'm gonna give it another minute 15, I reckon. I think I'd rather underexpose it and lift those shadows than overexpose it and have to bring back the highlights. It's usually easier doing it that way around. And of course it goes without saying that you need to be very careful when you're walking near your tripod in case you accidentally kick it because it will ruin your shot and when every photo takes four minutes you really don't want to be ruining those oh we are on 416 okay 
let's give it to 445 and then we'll press stop and see where we are actually no let's just give it to five minutes okay um what ah uh, okay i see what i've done there i've wasted five minutes by Calculating my exposure time for a 10 stop ND, I didn't change it up to a 15 stop. That wasn't very clever of me. All right, let's try that again. Okay, I actually hadn't calculated it wrong. Well, I had, but not in a way I thought. It was set to calculate for a 15 stop ND, but I hadn't taken into account the fact that I've also got a circular polarizer on the front, and that knocked off a good couple of stops. Um, of light so I had to basically go and recalculate taking that into account which is fine but it does mean that I'm starting this shot from scratch so it's another five minutes but hopefully this one will actually be visible fingers crossed beautiful clear water around here I think on a different day this is probably going to be a nice place to come swimming I imagine people probably diving off here. Maybe. Maybe that's not safe. I'm not much of a diver, to be honest. I'm not much of a swimmer all round, because beautiful though it looks, it's bloody cold. And I am quite a bit of a wimp when it comes to being cold and swimming. I like a heated pool. Or, at worst, a nice warm cove maybe in Tuscany but the Scottish Sea Scottish Sea Scottish Sea Scottish Sea is a bit too cold for me the great thing about shooting here at this time and also it's a Thursday midweek so I have it to myself last time I was here there were several photographers basically queuing up to come up this one ladder and sort of lining up on here which does tell me, of course, that this is a bit of a generic shot that everyone gets. And it is, you know, fine. But it's still a pretty cool one. And um, I don't think I'm going to get anything, you know, stand out that no one's ever seen before. But I'm hoping to still get quite a nice shot using this nice side light coming in, using that long exposure. And, you know, it doesn't need to be groundbreaking. doesn't need to be the first time anyone's seen this. Just needs to be nice enough. All right, I've just had a look and it's still too dark. So what I'm going to do, stick it F8. I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to go for seven minutes. Seven minutes. And we'll see how that goes. Sometimes I am a bit split on taking these like cliched shots a little bit. I think there's a lot of judgment kind of within the photography community between photographers of, oh, that's a generic shot, you know, go and find a new angle, go and find your own composition, go and find something different. And while I do totally agree, particularly if you want to be like a pro, you want to be a professional landscape photographer, you want to win awards, you want to get recognized, then yeah, that is the time when you're going to need to be spending that effort in finding new compositions, in going somewhere and finding a new way to show off a scene in order to make your work stand out. If you're just taking the exact same shot as everyone else, then no, your work is not going to stand out. However, most people are not trying to be professional landscape photographers. They're not trying to win the world's best awards in landscape photography. They're trying to just take nice photos that they love looking at, that their friends love looking at, that their family loves looking at, that maybe their Instagram followers, whether that's a hundred followers, whether it's a hundred thousand followers, whether it's a million followers. Like, it doesn't really matter. If it makes you happy, then that's what you should do. I think so often, as photographers, we try and shoot to impress other photographers. And that is a little bit of a problem because other photographers are going to be critical about your work in a way that your general audience, i.e. everyone else, the public, whoever, they're not going to see those same flaws, those same problems. Maybe they haven't seen this shot looking down St. Monin's Pier a thousand times. Maybe it's the first time they see it and they go, oh, wow, what a great shot. 
And so that's great. You've impressed some people. You've taken a shot that you like, like shoot for yourself. Do not shoot for other photographers. The other problem with doing really long exposures like this is that your scene can and often will change as you're taking your photo. The sun has gone behind this big bank of clouds that you can see here. And as a result, we no longer have that nice side light. That means that our exposure is changing because when I calculated my exposure, it was all lit up all down here. It was a brighter scene and it may well become bright again as the sun kind of moves. Um, but for now, it means that I'm gonna have to calculate a little bit of a longer exposure time in order to take into account that the scene itself is a little bit darker than it should be. Again, that's a calculation that I'm gonna have to take into account in my own head. So I think what I'm gonna do with this is shoot for maybe, I mean, I still think seven minutes should do it. Five and a half that I did on the last one was just about maybe a stop or two underexposed. I don't wanna go all the way to 10 minutes. I don't want to double that exposure time. I'm hoping that seven will do it. I might just push it to seven and a half. You know what? Let's just go for eight. Eight minutes. Ooh, might be able to see. The sun's coming out. All right, eight minutes. Let's see what we've got. It's a little bit dark, but it's pin sharp. And having a look at the histogram, it's not underexposed. Nothing's been clipped. So that's a good thing to do. Always check your histogram. 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 Always check your histogram and make sure that actually it is properly exposed. Because I think that with a bit of Lightroom work, I can pull something really nice back from this. So why don't we jump over there now? So here's our image straight out of camera, and I think it's in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy with this. It is a 484 second uh, uh, shutter speed, exposure time, which is huge. And as a result, it's made our water go all glassy and smooth and ghostly. Look at this around these rocks. I think it's great, it looks really good. But as you can see, the actual static details on the wall are all absolutely pin sharp. So the first thing I'm going to do to start this off is just to do a crop because I don't think the horizon is exactly straight so we can fix that by using the angle tool and just clicking and dragging that line right along our horizon let go and there we go uh, I'm also going to bring it in slightly from this side because we've just got this sort of little bit of rock peeking in now when I'm cropping and, exp and uh, composing photos I either want to have something all the way in like this rock is here or all the way out I don't like just having bits sort of just cut off it just doesn't look right so I'm just going to bring that into there and that's also really centralizing the uh, the break wall itself. Everything's very much down this central column, which I think just looks a lot neater. So I really like this shot and I don't really think it's gonna need a lot of work. Um, I wanna keep it fairly natural, but it does have a few issues with the white balance. So I'm gonna drag it down towards the cyan, not the cyan, to the green tints because it was a little bit too magenta. And I'm gonna cool it off a little bit and try and balance that out. I quite like it being, quite a blue image. Something like that I think looks quite nice. I'm gonna increase the exposure, bring down those highlights a little bit, increase the contrast slightly, and maybe up the whites, which again is just gonna help give it a little bit more pop. So already, we've got quite a nice dramatic looking image really brought out those blue tones in the water and in the sky and we've got some lovely well I was going to say orangey tones on the on the rock they're actually not very orangey they're a little bit sort of sickly green yellow at the moment so what I'm going to do is go to our HSL tab and I'm going to go into the hue and grab this yellow because I'm pretty sure all of this is in the yellow channel and if we just sort of move this down and yet yeah, we can see it's taking it from being a very sort of sickly green 
and it's just making it much more of a richer orange, much more like what the tone actually was, which also has the benefit of standing out really nicely against the blue tones in the water. You don't want to go all the way because then it starts to look pink. It looks very, very weird. Somewhere around there, I think, looks great. And what about our oranges? So we got a lot of oranges, a little bit. And again, I think we could stand to take that down. Not as much. Minus 16, I think, looks pretty nice to me. Uh, what about our aquas? Because we've got a lot of aqua in the water. And I actually think that what I'm going to do is slightly boost the aqua and take it from being quite green into being a bit more blue, somewhere around there. But then I'm going to grab our blue and take that and move it left a little bit. Not loads, because it very quickly goes quite green itself. About minus nine ish is I think all we really need so let's go into our luminance and if we up those oranges if I just pulse that up and down you can see what I mean it's just bringing out more of those details on the wall because we haven't got any orange anywhere else in the scene so this is really just allowing that brickwork to really stand out which I like again don't want to go overboard but just a little bit plus 20 I think is all we need and actually going to bring those yellows down, minus 10, just to kind of balance that out. If we turn that off and on, you can see just how much difference that's already making to the harbour wall. What about the luminance on our aquas? I think I might put that up a little bit. And I think I'm going to bring the blues down, but only a little bit, somewhere around there. Do we have any purple in this scene? That's a good question. The way I found out, is just by moving the slider up and down. In fact, that is the way, if you've watched my videos before, I tend to do a lot of my editing. I don't start off having uh, really worked out exactly what I want to do. So what I like to do is basically grab different sliders and move them up and down, see what effect it has on the shot, and then I can decide whether or not that's something I actually want to do. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking at the moment. Um, I'm just going to go down, right down to um, our camera calibration. I'm just going to have a play around with these as well, because these do so much to our colors. You can see we can get some really wild effects, much more um, than we actually want. But I think a little subtle touch with some of these can look really nice, bringing that down a little bit, maybe increasing that saturation. What about this one? Maybe doing the same, dragging that to the left a little bit too. Let's go back and refine these slightly. Turn it off, turn it on. Again, I think that's just given that a little bit more pop on the uh, on the concrete of the wall, which I really like. If we have a look at before and after, it's a huge difference. We've got this before, this quite dull purplish hue um, to our scene. We haven't really got much contrast on the wall. And now everything's popping out really, really nicely. But I'm not done quite yet. Um, I think I'm going to decrease the vibrance because it's a little bit overpowering, but I'm going to go quite a long way. I'm going to go to minus 40. Then I'm going to increase the saturation by the same amount. Now, I do this quite a lot in my photos, and honestly, I don't really know the difference between vibrance and saturation properly, but what I do know is that often using them in opposites like this, dragging one down and the other up, can give some really nice results. And it can work in the opposite way around too. We can increase our vibrance and decrease our saturation. And in fact, actually, I think I prefer that um, on this shot. So at this point, I'm going to just go back into our HSL tab because I think the orange might be a little bit overpowering. So I'm just going to decrease that saturation slightly. Not all the way. Minus that. That's looking a little bit better. And I might go back into our blue hue and adjust that because it got a little bit cyan after what we did with the camera calibration. So I think maybe just... Minus six is all we need. And just in case we have got any purple tones, I'm going to bring those into blue. And I don't think we've got any magenta, so that's fine. Now, what are our aquas doing? You know what? I actually think raising our aquas, because we've got quite a lot of green in the water going on, if we, you know, in the aquas, if we bring them down. So I think I'm going to push them right back up into the blues. 
if not all the way, because I actually really like it's it's making our scene look a bit more natural again because it just got a little bit too overpoweringly cyan, and that isn't what I want to go for um, in this shot. I think this has brought it back into more of a realistic um, a realistic place, and I think it's much better as a result. Something like this. I might bring that orange back up. It really is a case of fine tuning um, all the time. I, I tend to do this quite a lot. I go back and forth with different tools, changing it around, mixing it up, trying something different. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try bringing in a linear, um, uh, sorry, graduated filter on the sky, slightly darkening the exposure because it's a bit bright. I kind of want to tone it down and bring out some of those details. So what I'm going to do is bring the exposure down by 0.47 there, but increase the clarity, which is also going to increase that brightness. But as I do, look at how much more detail we're really carving out of those clouds up here. I think that looks really, really nice. I think I may be a little bit low on the exposure though. There we go. Just that, every little bit helps. And if we just turn that off and on, I think that's done a really nice thing there but I do like that we had before this sort of extra sort of light being cast over here so I think what I'm going to do leave that on but go to our radial filter I might not do this but I'm going to just give it an experiment reset the effect and actually up the exposure and up the warmth a little bit and then drag that in around here just bringing back that kind of sunlight that was that was hitting this area. That might be a little bit too much. Let's just bring it down to there. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. I actually quite like that. I think it gives quite a nice sort of hazy effect. And speaking of haze, what if we lowered that dehaze a little bit? No, I think that doesn't need it. We'll leave that where it was. Yeah, I actually quite like that. Let me know what you think if that's going a little bit too far, but I think that's quite nice. Um, so I'm going to uh, keep that in for now. But before I call it completely finished, I'm actually just going to grab these shadows because I think that we've got too much shadow detail. And I think if I just drag that down, it suddenly crushes those shadows a little bit. And I think allows the actual zigzag of the wall this top bit to stand out even more maybe that's too much or i could bring the shadows and increase that black level ever so slightly maybe even reduce our contrast up those whites that i think is now looking better just giving it a lot more pop and really allowed allows that to stand out we've got a much more defined zigzag whereas before i feel that it was all sort of merging into one the final thing which i think is going to really bring this shot together is some color grading so what i want to do is add some blues into our shadows a fair amount i think it can take it something around here maybe a little bit more and then in our highlights, I'm going to add some warmer tones. It's really going to emphasize that early morning light that was hitting the wall. Something like this. I think this is looking really, really nice. About there, I think it looks great. Maybe just tweak this a little bit, a little bit less. Something around there. So let's just turn that tool off and on and I think that's made a real difference like giving it that final touch we've made our other changes but this I think brings it all together and makes it into a shot which I really really like but that does bring me to an end of this edit I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing how I would go about taking the shot on location and then transforming it in Lightroom. If you have enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.